Okay, I'm ready to start soaping at about 75 degrees. Get my lye solution in there. I think I'll put my blender in there so I can pour it down the shaft of the blender, have a little less bubbles. So I sometimes edit this out, but I'll show you how long I stir this for because the more integrated I can get the lye and the oils, the less blending I have to do. This is all real time. It's really pretty close already. I feel like the kaolin clay helps me to emulsify that. We're just going to get the lavender essential oil in there too. And then I'm going to be doing a lot more blending. But let me get it into my colors first. Tell you, that's a copper and I'll give you the name on the screen this one is um, which one is this I can only tell by how light it is so it's very difficult I think that's my middle value purple that's my that's my light one so that's my iris purple this is my darker purple the new mica. Excited to use that. And I added a little bit of black mica to that too. It's my light green. And I have a lighter green for the base of my soap. And this is my Enchanted Forest dark green. And I'm going to split the base between these two. That's a real light celadon green. That's going to be my white. And I also edit out all my scraping just because it's very boring to watch me scrape a bowl. But I do realize that if you don't see it real time, sometimes you wonder how long I'm blending things, which is a big part of cold process soap making also. Clean up my mess. It's another thing I edit out because it's not fun watching people clean their messes up, but even I have to do that. So then, I'm going to add my titanium dioxide. Get this back in frame. There we go. Split that a little. And I'm going to be doing a drop swirl. That white doesn't usually look white until I blend it with the blender. And I really like this Celadon Green. Really does look like the color of ceramic Celadon. And I'm going to start to blend. Let me start with my light green. I want the white and the screen to almost be uh, 
indistinguishable. Of course, you're going to see the green, but I don't want it to be a sharp contrast because my smaller amounts of brighter micas will do that for me. Okay, there's the white. I'll be stirring those some more before I use them. And then bring my frother into the picture to mix my smaller amounts, starting with this lighter green. darker green the lightest purple I really like this iris purple a lot of micas are mixed already with some titanium dioxide to make them lighter. Let's see, I think this is my, I think this is my middle purple. This is my dark purple. Oh, that's beautiful. Finally, my copper. The copper was an afterthought just because I thought it'd be interesting to have a punch of something unexpected. And as promised, I'm going to stir these, see how they're doing. It's approaching a Almost a medium trace there. Just making it up as I go right now. So this side is going to be more white on the bottom, green on the bottom, and now I'm going to just, actually I'm going to keep this for the top. Let me um, start off with my darker purple. I'm going to do a drop swirl. I was going to do something different, but I'm going to go spontaneous as long as these colors are in there what I was going to do I was going to um, not pour all my white and green first and let that push down some of this drop swirl but I forgot to do that so it's it's all okay I'm kind of alternating between the purples and the greens but I want to get this copper in there too So let's scrape it's right in there. So I'm going to thank my friend Chrysley who ordered some soap 
and she ordered some lavender soap and then I looked at my site and I go oh my gosh I don't have any so I almost always have a lavender on my website so this is going to be that soap save some of the white in this green or after I add these accent colors I think I'll add I'm going to try to get them in a line so all this color shows up and I forgot to do something else I don't think it's too late. I mean, that's going to be disturbed, that color I just put on top. But I did want to do a hanger swirl. I've been liking this swirl I've been doing where I go up and down quite a bit, gradually moving to the other side of the loaf. And then going from side to side slowly bringing the hanger tool up now it's a good thing that I left some of this lighter color out so I could brighten up the top again There are soaps that I really heavily plan, and if I forget to do something, then I get a little more upset, but soaps like this, where I'm just kind of playing around and really enjoying the soap making process, I'm not too worried. This top is really going to be sort of polka dotted with color. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it from there. Wow, this majestic purple is almost black, which is great because it still has some of that purple look to it. screen on the top there. So this soap is really behaving itself. See how this just basically pours off this little spatula. Okay, let's just do some swirling. And that's it. We'll keep this a little more natural so no glitter on top. So there's the top, and I'll bring you right back for the cut. Okay, I'm ready to cut this lavender soap. And usually my essential oil soaps are not quite as fancy and colored, but I wanted to do something creative. So this is... Um, a little different than the former soaps that I made using the same swirl technique and that's basically because I used more color 
but I did use the hanger tool to do the same kind of movements and it's kind of cool like that there's the top so if you watch the making portion of this video you'll see that I moved the hanger tool up and down as I moved the tool across the bar and there's not very much sign of that except for maybe right there so I was going up and down like that and then at the very end I brought the hanger tool up as I swayed it from right to left so I like it and as I'm cutting this I can really smell that lavender essential oil and that brownish gold color that is the copper mica that I wanted just as a sort of different color to make it to spice it up a bit and you'll remember why the white is on one side and the green is on the other so I did a double pour at the same time so it's just different it just makes me want to soap because I like the anticipation of what happens if I do things a different way Such a fine line right there. Well, and thanks for watching. I really enjoy the feedback that I've gotten. And it's uh, considerable, but it's really interesting to see what other people see in the soap. Makes you look more closely at your soap. And if this whole thing is a learning experience, which it actually is, for me you can be your own critic but that's sometimes difficult not that you're a bad critic or anything but you're so used to seeing your own soap it's really people that are seeing it secondhand that can really offer some really great critique and i learn more that way so thanks for watching, commenting, love the thumbs up and the subscriptions, that helps me quite a bit, and tune into the Instagram page of mine where I post more of the things that really end up inspiring me, and they might not inspire me right away, so I take photos of things and as I get ideas I look through my photos and that really does help get some ideas going for color combinations or different patterns that I wonder how can I get that kind of texture or swirl in a soap so it's a great thing to have inspiration all right so here's the end piece and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time I also always forget to tell you that the soap store is open thanks for people that bought soap from me because after all, that's what keeps me going. And uh, I know one of the things that I do is I have bought a new camera. Helps me to photograph better and make better videos. So thanks for all that, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.